So you may recall that a few months ago, the International Criminal Court's head, Karim Khan, outrageously filed arrest warrants for Israel's Prime Minister and Defence Minister for fighting the genocidal maniacs of Hamas, saying that Israel was itself guilty of war crimes that justified arrest warrants. Well, it turns out that now, many months on, with the head of Hamas, Sinwar, dead, and also new accusations coming out against the ICC's rogue prosecutor, as Douglas Murray puts it, um, things are starting to look a bit different for Mr Khan. It's amazing how the tables can turn so quickly. Uh, I want to read to you the words of Douglas Murray, who wrote in The Spectator, talking about, as he said, the ICC's rogue prosecutor and the new stories that are developing about this uh, clearly biased um, anti-Israel um, prosecutor. Let's have a look at the words of uh, Douglas. He said, Yaya Sinwar, the mastermind of the 7th of October, went to meet his maker last week. Having spent a year being pursued through the underground tunnels of Gaza that he had built, he finally put his head up above the surface in the Tal al-Sultan area of Rafa. The world that had told the IDF not to go into Rafa was once again proved wrong. Sinwar was killed in an exchange of fire by a 19-year-old Israeli soldier who was not even in uniform on the 7th of October. Wow, can you imagine being that soldier? A couple of days after Sinwar's demise, I went into Rafa to see the house where he spent his final minutes. It had once been a rather nice villa, owned by a Palestinian family, who have since been keen to stress that they had absolutely no connection to the dead terrorist. <laughs> Sinwar simply bolted where he could and ran up these stairs, trailing blood as he went. From the first floor of the house, he had his final view of Gaza. It is not a good view. After a, after a year of house-to-house -house fighting, there's hardly a building that is undamaged. But I wondered as I sat in the last seat he had been in and surveyed the, late, the same landscape, whether he had thought even for a moment about what he had done, not just about his orchestration of the massacre, of 1,200 Jews and the kidnapping of hundreds more, a hundred of whom is still unaccounted for, but also what this leader of the Palestinian people had done to the Palestinian people. He started a war and told them that Hamas could win it. He tried to annihilate the Jewish state and lied to the Palestinian people that Hamas could achieve it. Very few people in the region and only a few dolts on college campuses and online trolls will now miss him. But his death does pose an interesting question for, among others, Karim Khan and the International Criminal Court, the ICC. In May, this preposterous prosecutor announced that he was seeking a set of arrest warrants for the situation in the state of Palestine. Ignore for a moment the fact that there is no recognised state of Palestine, and consider what Khan actually did. Without having presented any evidence, he announced he was seeking to issue arrest warrants for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israeli Defence Minister Yoav Gallant. As though to show that he is a fair-minded sort of chap, he said he was looking into issuing arrest warrants for Yahya Sinwar, Mohammed Def, and Ismail Haniya of Hamas. Now, all three of these Hamas heads are dead. They have gone to meet their one 72-year-old virgin. And this brings even more into question what this strange British prosecutor Khan is doing, or is trying to do, now that he has only democratically elected his Israeli leaders in his sights. By the way, I would just pause to note that he's, he had this sort of legal team of advisors before he issued these arrest warrants. Nearly all of them have clear anti-Israel prejudices, where they even accuse Israel of genocide weeks into the war before there was any details of what was actually happening in Gaza. The whole thing is corrupt to its core. It's just like the United Nations and all these other NGOs, which have... It's sort of like destination lawfare. You already know what you want the outcome to be and you work backwards from there. Anyway, Douglas continues. Stories in the weekend's papers bring some of this into a clearer light. As the Mail on Sunday reported, Khan rushed out his announcement in May to the great dissatisfaction of the professional team at the ICC. People inside the organisation were annoyed by the manner of his announcement and the way in which he made himself a sort of world policeman in an unprecedented self-promotional video. Publicity-seeking alone didn't quite seem to explain it. 
Now it turns out there may have been another reason why Khan made his announcement when he did. It transpires that a female co-worker had made accusations against him of sexual harassment, an allegation he denies. It took a while for the woman to make a complaint to a colleague, but she did, and Khan knew that this was about to come out. Khan's brother is the former Conservative MP, Imran Ahmad Khan, who was sent to prison two years ago for sexual molestation. So Karim knows what it's like for someone in a position of power to fall from grace awfully far and fast. The timeline of events suggests that the reason Karim Khan panicked and issued charges, not just against three terrorists he had no chance of prosecuting, but also against two democratically elected leaders, the first time the ICC has dared to try that, is that this was his insurance policy. (laughs) If that is true, I have to just pause for a second, if that is true, if that's what is going on here, that the reason why he's made Israel have to deal with this nonsense uh, arrest warrant, and he's created this whole global hoo-ha, is because he's facing sexual accusation charges, an entirely personal matter. (laughs) then that is just beyond comical. Anyway, the article continues. A week after his botched announcement, his allies put down a further little insurance plan for him by suggesting that he thought Mossad could threaten and blackmail him. Khan's sense of self-worth and self-protection were already known to be pretty impressive. Before he made his announcement in May, a number of American senators wrote to remind him that the US was regarded as a hostile act for an unelected international body to go after Americans or America's allies. Khan responded by telling the senators that under the Rome Statute, which America is also not a signatory to, threatening sanctions against the judge of the ICC could itself constitute a war crime. (laughs) Has the inexplicable now become explicable? By going off early and presenting no evidence, Khan has already compromised the investigation he pretends to be interested in. A number of the people around Khan are starting to speak out and speak to the media. There will be more to Khan. More to come. More to Khan. (laughs) Khan will obviously try to present himself as the injured party here, but it is he who has done something outrageous in international law. And if the allegations of his colleagues are true, he appears to have done so in order to protect his own skin. People will have differing views of the war in Gaza, but I've seen enough of it up close to know that it is the ICC that is in the process of be-clowning itself. The explanation as to why is why is now finding its way out. Perhaps the real inquiry should be into this rogue prosecutor. Again, I have to say, if the tables turn and it's the other way around and it's him who requires prosecution, then uh, it's farcical, isn't it? And I have to say that, you know what, this is actually very common with the anti-Semites in history. It is they themselves who are either guilty of what they accuse the Jews of or are scapegoating the Jews because they're dealing with their own internal problems that they're just projecting or trying to cover up. That's the way it's often worked in history. Think about some of the big uh, anti-Semites of, not even of uh, the past, but but today. Thinking of Dan Bilzerian, for example, this uh, sort of womanizer guy in America who's a big influencer and just goes around the place with lots of women and private jets and has a, quite a hedonistic lifestyle and he's deeply anti-Israel and anti-Semitic. Is that something that anti semites should be proud of? It's amazing. People just sort of reveal themselves and, 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 and hatreds reveal themselves if you look closely enough. You'll see that those who are most against Israel, they themselves dabble in the worst kind of um, lifestyle, beliefs, um, ideologies. So the anti-Israel movement have nothing to be proud of in the kind of people that lend their support to them. It doesn't take much digging to really get that kind of clarity and understand that. And it's amazing how I feel like it's been even more so in this war, in this past year, than in previous years. The truth is just becoming clearer and clearer and clearer, whether it's the corruption of UNRWA, um, whether it's the moral vacuousness of politicians who go against Israel, whether it's the media who are so quick to accuse Israel, and then we find out, not even days later, but hours later, that what they accuse Israel of 
wasn't even true. Like when they said, Israel bombed that hospital in Gaza. Well, it was actually Islamic Jihad that bombed a car park. So the truth is there for those who uh, are looking to find it. And I'm sure the truth of the nonsense of this prosecution charged by the ICC and whatever it is that we discover about Khan, who clearly is at the very least not fair and impartial, it's all going to come to the surface for those who are actually seeking to, to see it. If you've made it so far in this video, I have a request for you. JTV has been having a really big impact in spreading the truth about Israel and creating positive associations with the Jewish people, Judaism and Israel. We've really grown a lot, particularly in the last year, and we're having a really significant impact, both for Jews and non-Jews. But I really want to take JTV to the next level so we can start to compete with the other big online media beasts that are often peddling anti-Israel content. And the way we're going to do that is to scale even faster. So I'd love to build a team where we have other presenters doing shows like me, that start doing documentaries, supplementary content, animated content, etc, etc. And to do that, I'd like to build a bit of a team. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one fundraising day, just one, where we try and build up some funding in order to fund such a team. Now, to do that, it's going to obviously require people to get involved. And I'm wondering if you would consider, if you're watching JTV content and appreciate what we do and want to help partner with us in taking this to the next level and spreading the truth farther and wider than ever before, I wonder if you'd consider partnering with us simply by running a page, a mini page on the fundraiser that we do, where you just reach out to your contacts on that day that we choose to fundraise and see if they'll all chip in. If you'd be up for doing that, of which I would be so, so grateful, then please click on the Google form link in the video description of this video where you can simply just put in a few contact details. It'll be a very small commitment, as I say, literally just one day that we'll all agree upon as a collective community. But the impact is going to be so big. There's such strength in numbers. If we all pull together and do this, we can take this to the next level. And as I say, all of us can partner together in bringing and spreading the truth to the whole world. So please do consider clicking on that link, filling in the form, and I'll be in touch very soon to talk about the next steps. Small commitment, but a big impact. Hi, thank you so much for watching. To watch another one, click here. To stay up to date with all our content, click here to subscribe. And if you're able to, you can help support JTV to grow and grow by clicking join below this video, where you can become a member and get perks, including early access to videos and private live discussions with me. But most of all, you'll be partnering with us on our mission to change the world.